Hey Kid Lovers, we are so excited that you are back. We are eager to jump into our new unit. This is called Mini Beasts and we've got a lot in store for you in the next few videos. If you are new around here, these online learning labs are part of our Spark series where we hope to spark a love of learning. This is the first video in our Mini Beasts unit. If you wanna find out more, you can look up the hashtag Kid Lab Mini Beasts. We're gonna get started by showing off two of our favorite books that have informed this unit of study. One is called The Big Book of Bugs. Great illustrations. And the second is called One Small Square Backyard by Donald M. Silver. This one's great because you can section off a corner of your backyard and then come back to it frequently to talk about the things that you are finding. There are so many reasons why I love to study mini beasts, as we're calling them. There are tons of varieties and species, colors, shapes, sizes, but the biggest reason, number one reason I love to study these is because so many of them are good for my garden. So first, let's answer the question. What's the difference between a bug, an insect, and what we're calling a mini beast. A bug is a very casual blanket name that a lot of us use for creepy crawlies or winged insects, or really most of the things that we're gonna find outside. Technically speaking, a bug is a type of insect that has small, sharp, mouth-like parts that suck up its food. Insects, by definition, have three-part bodies, the head, the abdomen, and the thorax. They also have six legs and can have zero, two, or four wings. Mini beasts, is this fun name that's an umbrella for all kinds of bugs, insects, and even spiders, which we know have eight legs. So mini beasts can cover things like bees, butterflies, snails, worms, all kinds of things that we might think about as creepy crawlies or things we're certainly gonna find in the garden or in our backyard. Another way to think about this term mini beasts is that it covers invertebrates, that is animals that don't have a backbone or an internal skeleton. And I wanna talk about three today that are my personal superheroes out in the garden. And coming in from the left side of the garden, she's round, she's small and gentle. She's actually a beetle. Look who it is, it's Lucky Ladybug. <laughs> when she was interviewed for this segment and asked how she bulks up, Lucky Ladybug said, aphids, it's the breakfast of champions. By the way, aphids are bad bugs in your garden. Next up, it's the big showstopper with body bending abilities. Some might even say two creatures in one. The one, the only, the dazzling baby face butterfly. Ooh, 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 ooh. When we asked baby face about her morning beauty routine, her reply was, there's no secret really. I just start and end my day with a big glass of nectar. And I find that giving back pollen to the community just really helps me feel good on the inside. You know? Yes, baby face butterfly, we do know. And we thank all you pollinators out there for playing your part. And last but certainly not least, we have the final garden superhero. No arms, no legs, no eyes. This is nature's favorite recycler, the garbage disposal. And its superhero abilities really lie in its poop. Yeah, I said that. It's poop, it's like garden gold. Drum roll please. The Wonder Worm. Wonder Worm declined the interview, or rather we couldn't determine which end was the mouth, so we gave up. There you have it folks, my three favorite garden superheroes. Which one is your favorite? Is it Lucky Ladybug, Baby Face Butterfly, or the Wonder Worm? Now come outside with me and we're gonna work on our project for the day. Let's build a worm tower for the garden. These are gonna be simple wooden structures we place in our garden beds so we can fill with compost and food scraps, let it break down, and let worms do their job of making fertilizer for our gardens. All right, let's get started. So today for our Wonder Worm compost tower, we're gonna use scrap wood. This needs to be untreated wood. You'll need a pencil, you'll need some safety gear, some screws, electric screwdriver, 
a tape measure, and a saw. Make sure you're wearing your protective gear, friends. So gather your scrap wood. You wanna be sure, of course, that this is heat-treated lumber. That means it's not going to hurt our little creepy crawly friends inside of the worm tower. This is true if you're making just a regular compost bin as well. Some of you may wanna go dumpster diving and look for pallets in the neighborhood. That's great too. Just be sure it has that HT label on it. So today I actually wanna make a 20 inch worm tower. I'll make all my measurements, I'll draw it out, and then I'll use the saw very carefully to cut. All right, I'm ready to cut. have five pieces four main boards for our worm tower and a shorter board for our top so what you want to do is mark about two-thirds of the way down your board this is going to indicate where you want to drill your holes for the worms to be able to come in and out so I'm gonna prop up each board so I can drill holes into the bottom section of the worm tower without going into the table itself so we want to space these holes out, but we do want a fair amount of them. So you're going to want your holes spaced out a bit like this, and you can do multiple on each board. At the very end, we're going to clean up all of these edges with our sandpaper or sandpaper block. That way the worms won't cut themselves as they go in and out. So now we're ready to start assembling. Be sure to line up as best you can your edges. I'm gonna recommend putting about three screws on each side to stabilize. All right, we have our finished Power. Not bad. And here's the top. Now we're ready for some worms. So the biggest reason that I love making worm towers is because it allows us to do composting, but without having all of the stink in one specific place. It's actually gonna uh, stay right here inside of the tower. The food scraps are gonna be decomposed, break down, and these red wiggler worms I'm gonna put in here in a minute are really gonna do the job of recycling. It is fantastic. So anytime you have a little bit of food scraps from the kitchen, left over from dinner or lunch, you can bring it out here, toss it in, maybe put a little bit of water, some brown material as well, and then you're good to go. Let the worms do their work, and the worm castings are gonna come out the bottom and they're gonna work its way into the soil, which is fertilizer for the soil. It's perfect for your garden. We've made worm towers for our other garden beds in the last few seasons. This is a brand new garden bed this year that we're trying out with wildflowers. And so I thought this would be a great opportunity to include a worm tower. So we're gonna dig a hole here and we're gonna plop our worm tower in. We wanna be sure that the holes go down below the soil. And then our next step is we're gonna fill it with different material. how we're doing looks pretty good we're gonna backfill it a bit and we're ready to start filling it I'm gonna put in some of this loose soil it's got some weed scraps I'm gonna put in some of the leftover sawdust from our project and some cut up paper bag. If you've got newspaper clippings or junk mail clippings, just be sure it doesn't have a plastic coating on it like some junk mail or ads do. So be sure it's actual paper. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of moisture now. Worms really need that moisture in order to survive, they can't dry out. I also brought out some kitchen scraps for our worms today. I've got some greens 
a banana peel, some apple peel. So I'm gonna go ahead, put a little bit of that in here as well. It's kind of like making our own recipe here. Again, I'm gonna put some water down in here. Be sure that it gets nice and wet. A little more soil. And I think we're ready for our worms. These are red wiggler worms. Great for composting alongside of the earthworms that you'll usually find in your garden bed. Amazing little creatures. Nature's recyclers right here. All right, friends. Go to work. Don't forget to regularly check your compost worm tower just to be sure that everything's going well. You're gonna want a mix of brown and green material. Browns being sawdust, dead leaves, paper, scraps, thin cardboard, and green is the organic matter. Most of the kitchen scraps will do. There we go, have fun. If you give this project a try at home, be sure to tag us so we can see it. And check out the description below for more resources. See you next time. Ooh, ooh, ooh.